well, guys. Charles Walker is back, calling out the government once again because the media and Labour Party are so neck deep in it, they won't actually do it. In fact, the BBC shit weasel in the clip I'm about to show you might as well be Matt Hancock's cheerleader because he does his best to spin the government's narrative against Sir Charles Walker, who some of you might know is the vice chair of the Conservative Party's backbench 1922 committee and obviously a supporter of freedom and common sense. Unfortunately, one of the very few in Parliament with democracy in mind from either side. He was calling out the fact that Boris Johnson knew he was going to cancel Christmas and just played a waiting game until Parliament had been closed for the holidays and all the MPs had been sent back to their constituencies. As some of you might know, he didn't want any more Tory MPs sitting there shitting on the government's parade in the Houses of Parliament as they have done in recent times over this lunacy. Charles Walker pulls very few punches when it comes to what we are seeing now regarding the fact that the government have changed something Parliament voted on without another vote or debate. And he almost outright calls Matt Hancock a liar and stops just short of demanding he resigns in complete disgrace for all he has done, but he suggests he should. Personally, I think all involved should be arrested at the very least, but that is just me. Anyway, enough of me talking, let's listen to what Sir Charles Walker has to say and also listen to the BBC Tosspot doing his best to run damage control for the government against their own MPs. When, as you know, if this was about Brexit, they would be all over it like a fly around shit, let me tell you. In all this has once again been ignored. The legislature is not sitting and there are no plans for a recall. The executive, the government, has simply swept traditional Christmas away. A vote on the restrictions will be held, we are told, at the beginning of January. Charles Walker is vice chair of the committee that represents backbench Conservative Party MPs, the 1922. I suspect the government knew they were going to cancel Christmas on Wednesday and Thursday when they were still telling the House of Commons they plan to press ahead. And I think many colleagues find that extremely egregious. The Christmas period was passed into law by the House of Commons in a vote after a debate. And the view of most colleagues was that to be changed, another vote would be required in the House of Commons. So I suspect the decision was delayed until we were safely away back to our constituencies. Matt Hancock, the Health Secretary, has said this morning that that is not the case, that it was the results of a briefing on Friday that yeah. effectively forced the government's hand. Yeah, well, I'm, I'd have to probably uh, disagree with the Secretary of State for that. Um, the plan was to allow people to exercise their judgment. Nobody wants to put an elderly relative at risk, and people had some agency in their life to make decisions. And now, once again, the way we live our lives is mandated in law. People with terminal cancer won't get to see their children and grandchildren unless they are breaking the law. Surely at some stage, a senior government minister has to say, um, I've offered my resignation to the prime minister, and the prime minister has to say, sadly, I've had to accept it. You have mentioned in this morning's papers, I think, your lack of confidence in the health secretary, Matt Hancock. You've spoken just now about the idea that someone, a minister, should resign. You can't yep. seriously be calling for the resignation of the health secretary just no, as the I NHS faces this situation. It's not for me to call for anyone's resignation. It's for those in high public office to decide whether they should offer their resignation. We have a tier system that keeps collapsing. We've proven now tested to destruction that lockdowns don't work. We have an economy that is not creating jobs, but losing millions of jobs across the piece. So you tell me when the right time for someone is to offer their resignation. And let's be perfectly clear. Those who do behave irresponsibly are going to behave irresponsibly with or without a law. The government, in my view, knew on Thursday, possibly even Wednesday, that they were going to pull the plug on Christmas, but they waited till Parliament had gone. That, on top of everything else, is a resigning matter. This torrent of information comes at the government with conflicting opinions. If it was the case that they were presented with this information on the Friday, that the virus was, in Matt Hancock's word, words, out of control, they could do nothing but act on the Saturday, could they? But why do they have to keep mandating it in law? I mean, people were making the right decisions. We are putting a law in place that will criminalise people who choose to see their families at Christmas. We can't keep treating people like this. There is a crisis of mental health. There is a growing crisis of confidence. And I'm not asking for the government to collapse. I'm asking for a Secretary of State to take some responsibility. 
Well, I think it's safe to say Charles Walker is spot on with all he said in that and could have even gone much further in all honesty. The BBC Tosspot hosting it though shows us the utter embarrassment that the BBC is in 2020. He knows full well the government had this planned in advance and it would not surprise me if it was leaked to the press early but they got told to sit on it. What makes it even worse is the BBC could literally end this shit show now, possibly endearing many people to their failing woke shit show for at least standing up for what's right in one issue. Because as we know they don't often do that on any issues at all which is part of the reason why people despise them with a passion and this complicity bullshit and spin that we get from them on a daily basis is only going to make more people hate their guts with a passion as i said but the most low-life shit weasel thing i heard the bbc host say during this short interview was in relation to matt hancock resigning he literally frames it with you can't expect the health secretary to resign when the nhs faces this situation knowing of course full well that the nhs is actually doing better this year than it did last year in terms of capacity as the mail pointed out yesterday. Thankfully, Sir Charles Walker shits on the BBC host nonsense while pointing out the shit show that this government has produced with pointless failed lockdowns and clusterfucking the economy beyond all measure. So in finishing, I have to congratulate Sir Charles Walker on his stance once again. He is not having their bullshit and neither should anyone else. But everybody needs to remember the BBC being complicit in this bullshit and as you see here, doing their best to cover for the government. So much for being anti-Boris, hey? There is a pattern consistent throughout history of oppressed people turning on the oppressors. Slaves against their owners, the peasantry against the feudal barons, colonies, Mr. Verhofstadt, against their empires. <laughs> and that is why Britain is leaving. And it doesn't matter which language you use, we are going and we are glad to be going. We're off. <laughs>